Hey, welcome to He Walks With Us Everywhere. I'm Tracy. Um, happy Feast of Tabernacles again. This is the final day. It's the eighth day, which is a Sabbath day's rest. And so I just wanted to come on here and make a quick video about some interesting things that I discovered. And well, you know how I love to share what I learned with all of y'all. I hope that it is edifying for the body and just a great learning thing. All right, so let's flip to 1 Timothy chapter 6, verse 20 and 21. I'm going to start here. O Timothy, keep that which is committed to thy trust, avoiding profane and vain babblings and oppositions of science, falsely so called, which some professing have erred concerning the faith. Grace be with thee. Amen. So I love the fact that Paul is writing to Timothy and that he calls it, he says, science falsely so-called, all right? And so I wanted to do, first let's do a word study in this chapter of Timothy. And so the word profane is 952 in Strong's and it's bebelos, bebelos, profane from 939, heathen, wicked, a trodden and trampled spot that is opened to the casual step of every intruder or passerby, means permitted to be trodden, accessible, hence unhallowed, profane, opposite to heros, which is sacred, used of persons and things. It is that which lacks all relationship or affinity, which is also attraction, which lacks all relationship or affinity to God. So he says, keep that which is committed to thy trust, avoiding profane. So the opposite of sacred, profane, right? And vain is 3150. It's met metayologio. Metayologia. It's really hard to pronounce some of these. Y'all bear with me. It's from 3151. Random talk. Babble, vain jangling. When I looked in my old dictionary, which the cover got ripped off by the puppy, but here it is, okay, uh, where's the camera? There it is. Oh, it's backwards, that's lovely. All right, well, when you look in this, I wanted to see what the word jangle meant. And the word jangle means to quarrel. So avoiding profane in vain or random or quarrelsome babblings. Babblings is 2757. It's kenophonia, kenophonia, empty sounding, fruitless discussions, discussion on useless subjects. Wow, what a wake up call for all of us Christians. How many times do we find ourselves engaged in vain, profane babblings, right? Discussions that are not fruitful. And the Lord lets us know through Paul's words to Timothy. He says, keep that which is committed to thy trust. Avoid these things, right? And he says, opposition, vain babblings, and oppositions of science, falsely so-called. Oppositions is 477. It's antithesis, all right? So where we get the word antithesis, it is Greek. Oppositions, the antithesis means conflict of theories a contrary position. Anti is against, which antithesis, okay, antithesis. And to theme is to place. So you want to avoid this, right? Oppositions to science. Silent science is Strong's 1108. It's gnos gnosis, gnosis. Gnosis is from 1097, and it means knowing. Isn't that incredible? Because we say know or knowing, and the word is gnosis. It's knowledge, knowing. A seeking to know as inquiry, investigation, knowledge. A more exact viewing of an object previously seen from a distance. The small portion of knowledge or gnosis is improved upon and it is seen more strongly and clearly. So when he says, falsely so-called because see science in this term in gnosis means knowing knowledge seeking to know inquiry investigation it's 
a more exact viewing of an object previously seen from a distance. I mean, think about that. So that's what science is supposed to be. It's a knowing, it's a studying to show yourself approved. When he says falsely, falsely is pseudo, pseudonumos, pseudonumos, 5581. It's untruly named, under a false name, said of the knowledge professed by the propagandists of various heretical cults. Here's the one that really got me, to deceive by lies. So when he says falsely so-called, this science, this knowledge, so-called, right, falsely, it's they're deceiving by lies. They're calling it science, but it's not actual science. Science is a studying, right? It's a, it's a knowing to show yourselves approved, to know, to have understanding in truth. I have a dog wanting to join the, uh, the, the little get together today. So let's, let's introduce you to Julie. Oh, this is Julie. Say hi. That doesn't, you're not really saying anything, are you? See, look at yourself right there. Say hi. So if you see little paws running around in the background or anything, this is the cause of that. Or if there's any barking or craziness, this would be the reason. Okay, please don't bite, ouch. All right, go back and play with things that are not important books, please. All right, let's continue. So it says here, which some professing have erred concerning the faith. Well, what does professing mean? It's 1861. It's epangle, epangelo, epangelo, to announce upon, to engage to do something, to assert something respecting oneself, profess. Sometimes it's used as make a promise, but it's to profess. As a verb, it means to announce or proclaim, right? So professing, you're proclaiming. So it says, which some proclaiming have erred. Erred is 635. It's apoplaneo, apoplaneo, to lead astray, to stray from truth, seduce, to cause to wander away from the truth, to lead astray from the truth, to err by, lead, by being led astray. Okay, so it's to cause to wander astray from the truth, to lead astray from the truth, to err by being led astray. So when he says, which some professing have erred. So these, these folks have been led astray by believing the falsely so-called knowledge, the falsely so-called science, even of his day, of Paul's day, of Timothy's day. And it says concerning. Now the word concerning isn't in the concordance. It tells you to look at the appendix, which doesn't give you a definition. And so I looked at what does concern mean in the New Testament and we're led to 4012, concern. And so the root of concerning here in the New Testament means pere, which is through, all over, around, a circuit, excess, completeness. It's like thoroughly, right? So concerning, so thoroughly, or completeness of. Concerning the faith. And the faith is 4102 here. It's uh, pistis, pistis, from 3982, persuasion, credence, moral conviction of religious truth or the truthfulness of God, especially, hear this, especially as reliance upon Christ through salvation, constancy in such profession. It's a constant thing, right? In our profession of our faith in Christ, that he is our hope, that he is our physician, that he is our healer, that he is our protection, right? Truth itself, faith, the, the definition here of faith is truth itself. And who is truth? Not what is truth, like the world asks. Truth is a person. Truth is Jesus Christ our Lord. Faith is also assurance, okay? And then I was gonna read from Strong's on page 202 of Strong's in the Greek. All right, so page 202. Let me get the old glasses on because I don't really need them. All right, 202. Let's just read. Conviction of the truth of anything, belief, 
of a conviction or belief respecting man's relationship to God and divine things, generally with the included idea of trust and holy fervor born of faith and joined with it. It is related to God with the conviction that God exists and is the creator and ruler of all things, the provider and bestower of eternal salvation through Christ. To Christ with a strong and welcome conviction or belief that Jesus is the Messiah through whom we obtain eternal salvation in the kingdom of God. It includes all of the religious beliefs of Christians, the faith. Pistis is used of belief with the predominant idea of trust or confidence, not in a man-made injectionable poison. In Christ alone, do you see? Not in the government, in Christ alone. This is huge. This is, this is such an important verse of scripture, y'all, and it's hit me like a ton of bricks today because let's continue on. Because I was, I was considering the word pandemic, all right? I was considering pandemic. And, and, and so I was like, well, I've got these really cool 1921 encyclopedias, right? I've got these Collier's encyclopedias. Praise the Lord. And this is before history was unraveled and rewritten, okay? And so I wanted to look. I wanted to look and see what did they say in 1921 about the word pandemic? What did they say? According to Safari or Google, I'm sure, or Wiki, Wiki, Picky Poo, okay, whatever you want to use, pick your poison because that's what it is. It's poisoning the minds of Christ followers. It's poisoning the minds of everybody on this earth, okay? According to the claims that you find online, they say that pandemic is further reaching than an epidemic. So they claim that the word pandemic means that it's further reaching. Here's the other baloney that I found. Supposedly, the word pandemic was recorded somewhere. It doesn't give you the source, but somewhere. You just gotta trust them. Don't think for yourself now. This is science, right? Don't think for yourself, trust the science. <laughs> it's ridiculous. In 1853, it was recorded and written a pandemic disease. Again, no sourcing. Then it says it is from the 1660s. Okay, so, so let's go with that. So it's from the 1660s and it comes from, according to them, the word pandemus, pandemus, right? So I said, well, let's look a little bit further, shall we? Yes, let's, let's do that. Okay, so the first thing that it tells us is that it was supposedly around in the 1600s. If that be true, if that's true, explain to me why my 1921 encyclopedia has no such word, okay? Pandemic doesn't even occur in the 1921 encyclopedia at all. It's nowhere in there. And so then I looked, okay, well, maybe pandemus is in there. It's not in there. Here's what does show up. Let's read. The word epidemic shows up. And here's what it says, according to the 1921 Collier's Encyclopedia. Epidemic, a disease which attacks many persons at the same time at different places, spreading with great rapidity, extremely virulent and fatal at the first onset, gradually becoming, gradually becoming less, do you hear this? Becoming spent and feeble, gradually becoming spent and feeble, so that the early cases are usually the worst. The plague, cholera, smallpox, and influenza are epidemics and other infectious diseases are among that number. All right, well that contradicts in terms what they try and tell us when we do a search on the worldwide web of lies, right? Because they're trying to tell us that unlike an epidemic, a pandemic is much further reaching. Really? Because what I just read 
is pretty clear. And these people understood how these things worked, having gone through and survived the plague, the Black Death, right? Cholera, smallpox, and the influenza that killed so many people. They labeled these epidemics. It was far-reaching. It was spreading with great rapidity, all right? And what they learned through the plague and cholera and smallpox and influenza, what they learned is it is deadly on the first onset. It's pretty bad when it first hits everybody. But then it gradually becomes spent and feeble. So then why is the falsely called science narrative today trying to tell us that this thing is, oh, every day it's getting worse. Oh, well, this new one, <laughs> it's terrible. Oh, it's ter more terribler than the first one. Show me your science, falsely so-called, right? Where's the knowledge? It ain't there. All right, and I said ain't, but I don't like that word. Okay, now let's look a little deeper into what this word pandemic could potentially derive from. Because when, again, I looked it up in, you know, the, the World Wide Web of Lies, it tells us that it comes from the word pan, which they claim the word pan means all. Let me tell you what uh, 1921 calls pan. In Greek mythology, which we all know who are wide awake, that the things that they label as fairy tales and mythology and mythological and whatever else are fallen entities, all right, demons. These are the ones who came and fell to the earth and took human wives and they're, they're the bad guys, but they just call it a myth to keep people asleep, eyes wide shut, right? Here's what it says about Pan. In Greek mythology, the god of shepherds, of huntsmen, of all rural inhabitants, he was the son of Mercury and was a monster in appearance, having two small horns on his head, a ruddy complexion, a flat nose, and his legs, thighs, tail, and feet were like those of a goat. Oh, it's starting to make more sense now, isn't it? A goat demic. Pandemic. All right, let's look at demic. So, the word demos is where they get the word demic from pandemic. Demos is also called demotic. Sure sounds a lot like demonic, but I'm not going there with this. Demotic. They're trying to tell on the World Wide Web of Lies. And yes, I'm going to say that repeatedly because that's what it is. They're trying to say that demotic means people. So I went to the trusty 1921 Colliers. Uh, wh where are we at? We're in a volume three. Okay, we're going from Circum to Elkhart. Let's see, is that word in there? Is demotic in 1921? Oh, it is. So it says demotic or inchorial alphabet. Inchorial, I don't know how to pronounce that. Maybe it's inchorial alphabet. A simplification of the heretic, which again was a contradiction of the hieroglyphic characters. Oh wait, so there's some Egyptology in this now. All right, did you guys hear that? Demotic, which is where they're telling us they're getting pandemic from, is a simplification of the Hieratic, hieratic, which again was a contradiction, sorry, a contraction of the hieroglyphic characters. This is about Egyptology. This is about Pan, a goat man, right? A goat angel demon. Do you guys understand? It's all delusion. When God says that he will cast a strong delusion upon all the earth so that they would believe a lie, y'all, we're in the sign of the times right now. And I was so furious as I'm reading these things and I'm going to the 1921 encyclopedia that hasn't been tweaked, it hasn't been edited, you know, for incorrect, politically incorrect content. It hasn't been, you know, wiped off because it's in hard print, thank you, Lord. Do you guys see? And so I go back again. Now listen once more to what Paul said to Timothy. O Timothy, keep that which is committed to thy trust, avoiding profane and vain babblings and oppositions of science falsely so-called, which some professing have erred 
concerning the faith. Grace be with thee. Amen. Y'all, we live in a time where politicians are throwing around the word God and Jesus. Well, what God and what Jesus do they serve? It is not the God and Jesus of our Holy Bible. It is not the Alpha and Omega. It's not the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. They are worshiping and speaking to a different Christ, not Christ our Lord. So when they're out there professing that he gave us this injectable poison juice to shoot up in our arms and who knows where else down the road, they are not talking about Christ our Lord. This is their false Jesus. This is in many false, you know, have come, right? He says, don't believe them when they say he's over here in the desert or he's over there. Don't believe it, Jesus said, right? But people are turning. They're turning away from having faith and trust in Christ alone for salvation, for protection, for cleansing, for purifying, for hope. They're turning toward man. Man is fallible. Science is falsely so-called. There is no knowledge, not real knowledge, because real knowledge comes from actual truth. And the only truth is found in Jesus Christ. So with that, I'm gonna close out for now, but I love you all and I just, I, a warning of caution, you know, you guys be really careful when you're doing searches on the World Wide Web of Lies, right? Because there are so many things that have been changed and altered and are literally in real time being changed. I showed you that thing last year, or maybe it was, no, it was last year, about the guillotines in Canada, right? And I saved the sites. I have screenshots of all of them. When the Canadian government had sent out to get bids on the cheapest guillotines that they could find. They literally said that. Guillotines. They were putting it out there to find people who would mass produce them. And about a month later, I went back to the same link, the same site, and lo and behold, you know what it now reads? Hydraulic paper cutter. Well, I ain't made of paper. Okay, so they can play their little word salad games, but we need to study to show ourselves approved. We are wise as serpents, harmless as doves, and today is the day of salvation, right? We need to take hold that which the Lord has given us. We need to use the brains that God has placed within us to think clearly, right? Study to show yourself approved. He says, my people, my people, not Satan's people, He's talking about his people, my people perish. Just that alone, those three words should really stir us all to our core. My people perish, saith the Lord. For what? For a lack of knowledge. We can akin that to science, right? And so, gnosis. I want you all to gnosis something. I want you to study, read his word, Pray to the Holy Spirit. Realize that this whole deception that's taking hold of the whole entire world at this one moment in time is on purpose. It's by design, but it's not Satan's, you see, because it's been written 2,000 years ago in our scripture. It's been written. He told us it was coming. He told us how it would happen. He prepared us in advance. So be prepared, right? Get in his word. Study every day, y'all. And just praise the Lord for him giving us the gnosis, the faith, the increase of faith during these times to be able to stand firm in the day of great tribulation, which is coming upon the earth. So that on that final day, when every knee bows and every tongue confesses, we will hear, well done, my good and faithful servant. Well done. I love you all.